Start in Romans chapter 8. Thank you that you are with us to guide us, to help us, to hold us on the steady road. Please uh, be with us through the rest of this week. Guide us, give us, uh, give us your wisdom and extra grace, Lord, to do your will. Thank you. Amen. So Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not, who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit, the spirit of life in Christ, and in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So we have a, a we have a uh, we have a uh, two, two different sides. The the we have the mind of the flesh, the 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 ways in the mind of the flesh, and then we have the those who walk after the spirit, the, the mind of Christ. And we're called to have the we're called to follow after the mind of Christ, to have the mind of Christ in our life. We were born with the mind of, of the flesh, but we we now have we're now uh, called to have the mind of Christ. Romans twelve. Romans 12, verse 9. Okay, Romans 12, 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honoring, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing necessities of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and not curse. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. 
and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, one towards another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it, is, if it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. So there again, uh, we have, uh, it's calling for us to have the mind of Christ and describes what it is that we are to, to, uh, to have a, a fervent and burning spirit serving the Lord, that, uh, that we not be slothful in our business, that uh, we have brotherly love and that we prefer to be around one another and, and, not, to, um, and not to be separate, that we prefer uh, that we that we like we that we like to gather around. We get we gather strength from being around one another. We gather you know, strength of mind and spirit, uh, a, a direction we have of one another. It's it's real easy sometimes to be separated from 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 the body of Christ, but the, that separation for too long can lead to some some bad things. So. First uh, Corinthians 13. First Corinthians thirteen eleven. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So we have, uh, let's see. so we have the, uh, when we're when we're children, it's marking that when we're children, we have we have a certain way of thinking and doing, a certain way of looking at things. But when we when we get older, we when we get older, we, we put away. We're supposed to put away those childish things. We're supposed to have a more adult way of thinking. Well, we can look at it spiritually that when we're before we're saved. We have all those things of the world that we think that we hold so highly that we uh, that seem so important. But after we're saved, then we have we're supposed to be uh, looking towards the mind of Christ. So we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. Um, the word understood. The word understood is uh, to exercise the mind, that is to entertain, to have uh, sentiment, or by implication, to be disposed or less earn, earnest in a certain direction, intently or interest oneself within. So to, to be focused, to be focused on, to have our minds focused on Christ to have our minds head in the direction that, that our mind would would be would, that our mind would be focused on on heavenly things and we look more like Christ every day Philippians 2 Philippians 2.2. 2. Fulfill, uh, fulfill ye my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, 
being of one accord of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man unto his own things, but every man also the things of the others. Now let this mind be in you, which it was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him, him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. Wherefore God has also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow of the things in heaven and the things in earth and the things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is, the, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we are to, uh, it's calling us to have, to be, to be like-minded, to, that, that our minds as a church would be, would be uh, headed in the same direction, that we wouldn't, the church wouldn't be all split up and heading in, in all sorts of different directions. We're not all going to look exactly the same on everything that we do. We're not all going to have the same uh, talents and gifts and stuff like that, but we're all going to be heading in the same way. We're all going to agree on the important things. And so it calls for us to, to be like-minded. You, know, you see too often, you see churches that uh, they'll, they'll, they'll sit there and battle over the, over the little things. <clears throat> and uh, they'll sit there and pick at all the, all the little things in it that, that are the differences between one and another. We have to have the same Christ. Uh, Christ has to be God. And that's, that's just the way, you know, there are certain things that have to be the way they have to be. But then there are going to be certain differences on the way we choose to look at Scripture on certain parts because it's not always as clear in some parts. And I think God leaves it that way on purpose, just to, just to give us something to, to, to talk and to mull over what, one with another. And also to encourage us to study more, to look at more of God's Word, to learn more about Him. So, but uh, Christ came down to earth. He was, he was, born of flesh. He was born of flesh, but yet he was perfect. He, he lived a perfect life, did everything and fulfilled everything perfectly. And so we are called to look to Christ with everything that we do, to have the mind of Christ. We'll go to Philippians 4. In Philippians, it, in Philippians especially, it encourages us to have the mind of Christ so much. It really points out that we are to have, have the mind of Christ. Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are, are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So before we had the mind of the of the flesh and we looked, we looked towards the world and we see what the world does and that they look at the things that are going on and sometimes they panic with everything that's going on. 
they, they panic, they don't know where to go, they think the world's gonna end or, or whatever, you know. It just depends what side of the you know, aisle they choose to stand on, on whether on what, what exactly they do. And then the next person gets in the presidency seat and the other aisle panics and goes all crazy and everything. But we're not supposed to be like that. We're not supposed to be guided by who sits in the presidency. And we know that the, the world can completely fall apart around, around everybody, but yet that doesn't change for us who's in charge. It doesn't change what, what mind we're supposed to have. Yeah, things are, that just means things are gonna get hard wherever you're at. And that's, it's understandable to be a little concerned from time to time or concerned to see your country falling apart. And, but, uh, but we look and we realize that when the country regarded the Bible more, it, it of course, it, it looked a lot more like Christ. It looked a lot more like the Bible. It wasn't perfect because it didn't, the country was not a Christian country. It was, it's just the people in it regarded what the Bible had to say a lot, a lot more than, than others. But as things are, as things are continuing to progress, as they seem to be kind of progressing and you don't know you don't know if there might be a revival around the country around the corner you just have no idea you don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow and so we don't know i mean we know that the country that this kind of is a trend that god has he has that kind of thing where things start to fall apart things are are starting to really get bad and then something happens to to all of a sudden snap everything back it more into alignment and so to bring things back to looking to kind of like a, a, a mini kind of like a revival where it kind of it brings everything back eventually that's not going to happen well it'll have the ultimate revival when christ comes back then everything will be set right and there won't be any question anymore on on what's good and what's bad he'll he'll set everything right at that point but uh but we're not uh we're, we're not held by, by, by how the country uh, is, by how it votes, by, by what we do. We're not, our, our life may change on a small basis, but all in all, we still are to have the mind of Christ and we still have a task that we're supposed to do. Um, and sometimes God brings those things just to stir up the Christians. I don't know what it is, but God figured out that uh, well, he knew all from the beginning that us, that, that uh, mankind seems to need uh, problems in order to stir us up, to head us in the right direction, you know, and we look to different kinds of things. Uh, one natural thing that we can look at is, is uh, eagles up in a nest. Somebody pointed out one time that uh, you have eagles, you have young in a nest and they lay these eggs and they hatch. And then they come out and the, the nest is soft and warm. They got all these feathers in there to help keep it all soft and warm and everything. But eventually the, the little chick grows up to a, a, to a bird and it's time for it to be stirred up. So the, so the mom, so the, so the mother eagle comes in and she comes in and comes down one day and starts messing up the nest. So now instead of the soft part up, it's got the pokey parts up. And, and all of a sudden the pokey parts are up and so now it's poking into you and, and then gee, it just seems to be going completely crazy. And then I guess they, they, start, they start really flapping their wings and everything and creating a lot of, of downdraft and it, and it just kind of pins the little bird against and causes, it makes it uh, have to struggle to try to move and I guess God designed things so that then the right oils would secrete out of the right places and and it would also build the chick up in the right ways in which so up until then, what has it had to have muscles to fly for? It's been given everything that it could need. Well, in the same kind of way, the struggle and the strife, sometimes, are the, especially for Christians, and the struggle and the, and the strife and the difficulties bring out something more. God knows that that's what builds us up. That's what causes us to look towards him and builds us in strength more to look, look like him. I mean, we see the different people from the, 
from, from the Bible and everything, we see the difficulty going through the wilderness. And then they got to the other side, and then after 40 years of punishment in the, in the wilderness, they get to the other side, um, and then they have the promised land and everything, but they had to kind of purify the group and to look more like they were supposed to. Uh, we look at, uh, at, at Joseph, that, you know, all the trouble he went through and everything else, but then God had a bigger plan on the other side. He had something that was much bigger and much more important. Uh, David spent all that time as a shepherd guarding the sheep, all that time saving them from, from, from wolves and lions and bears and everything. And so we see that pattern throughout the Bible that um, that seems to be uh, it seems to be a normal progression throughout the Bible. We'll go to Philippians verse uh, Philippians one, Philippians one verse But I would, ye un, should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out, have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the, in all the, play, uh, the palace and in all other uh, places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my words, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Uh, some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and uh, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preaches Christ uh, of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. So we look at, we look at Paul, we look at uh, where he is, and, and he was led into a difficult situation. He was led through lots of difficulties. Um, and so those difficulties which, which he went through and ultimately ending up in, ending up in prison and ultimately ending up losing losing his life and uh, but we look and God had greater things in mind it marks that he did it for the furtherance of the gospel God brought those things upon him so that it would further the gospel in certain areas that probably would not have have been in the, in the same sort of way uh, God sometimes brings different kinds of uh, different kinds of things. God will spread people out in, in different ways. We'll go to Acts eight. Acts chapter eight, verse one. And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at, at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried uh, Stephen to his burial and made great lamentations over him. But as for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling men and women, committing, committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. 
So we have another instance where, uh, where difficulty, where persecution took and, and scattered the people around. Sometimes God has to do different things to build us up. He has to do things to, to lead us in the right directions. Somebody gave sort of the illustration that uh, you, you, you take a salt shaker. Well, if you take the top off of it and you dump it all out, all the salt goes into one place. Well, that's a lot of salt all in one place, but then the rest of it, there's no salt for any place else. Well, I put that little lid on, on it and then it scatters the salt all over the food. So and then it, it has it, it distributes salt all over the place. And so then then you're able to, to so in that same sort of way, Christians sometimes have to be God has to bring difficulties to scatter us around. Sometimes he has to bring things to, to drive us to other places because he has a task for us in those other places. And we just have to follow, follow the will of God, follow what he has to say. Uh, Christianity is, is kind of, you, you saw it during different times uh, over the last couple of years, you know, stuff happens and, and suddenly, you know, oh, it's the end of Christianity. Oh, it's, you know, it's the, it's this horrible, it'll, it'll, nothing will, nothing will be the same or everything's so terrible and, and, and all of that. But Christianity is always kind of looked like that. I mean, that's what that's what things have always kind of looked like. It, it's it's hard to think of sometimes because the United States has been pretty nice for a long time, and so although things have been difficult at times, nothing like it is in other places, and and so we've had it pretty good for the most part. God has really blessed this land, and uh, but uh, that's kind of the model of Christianity. Uh, we see that uh, the, the Bible just mentions the death of James. It doesn't really go into detail about it, but there are other, other, uh, other words, other stuff that are written of, of the history of the church that talk about the death of James. And it, I guess he was, he, was, he was betrayed by somebody and they betrayed him. And then he was brought to prison and led to his death and I guess he was so cheerful when he went to his death that the person who betrayed him uh, saw that he was so cheerful that he repented and ended up being put to death with him. And so it's that, it's that difference, that it's that way of looking at that mind of Christ that is just totally different than what, than, than what we usually, than the way we usually look at things. It's just, it's not the same. I mean, who, who does the, who does those things? Who, who goes to, uh, who goes and, and loves all of their brothers and sisters and tries so hard to try to help one another? I mean, Christians are marked by their love. Well, Christians go to all that trouble because they they have the mind of Christ. They're looking to grow in the mind of Christ. Uh, we don't we don't look to our own self. The world focuses on themselves so much, but we have the mind that we're supposed to be growing in the mind of Christ to have the mind of Christ. So all those things in in, in Philippians that we look at in chapter four, all those things that we are to think upon, that's that's what Christians are to focus on more than anything else. Sometimes we can spend a lot of time looking at the news and. Let's face it, bad news sells. That's the reason why they put it. And we like to see, we would like to see more good news, but they know that uh, bad news sells. But we're not, so we're not supposed to be, you know, uh, downhearted by it, by it, everything. Yeah, we're not going to like the way things are going. We're not supposed to, you know, be our all cheerful that every that everybody is in hurt or in pain. But but yet we're, we're supposed to have be different, that uh, the things aren't supposed to, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not supposed to take things quite the same way. Uh, somebody pointed out one time that uh, you, you look at when uh, the disciples all went out onto a boat, there was a big storm, and Jesus is asleep in the boat. And uh, you just think about what if, and of course, he, he then is, is, is woke up calms the storm and rebukes them for for having little faith, for being afraid, for being so fearful, to help you to realize that 
we don't know everything they were thinking and what they were doing. It just tells what they did. And so we don't know everything, but you know, however they were thinking, it wasn't right. So you, you think, what if it had been a little different? What if they had done differently? What if, you know, during, you know, they have, they have Jesus with them. I don't know if they fully understood everything at that moment, but uh, they have, they have God sitting there, God in the flesh sitting with them. You know, what if they had done something like singing praises to God or something? I don't know. It, it's not my, it, it's not something that I lean towards, I'll tell you. <laughs> that when difficulties come, that's not, that's not how I normally do it. It's, it's a real task sometimes to remind myself that, that things are that way. Or what if they had just decided that, that they were tired and they were going to lay down and go to sleep too? But after all, if Jesus wasn't worried about it, they weren't that worried about it. So I don't know. I don't know what would have happened, but it happened the way it did. So, so it, and it's a lesson to us that they were men too. They were just people. They had the same, but we see after Christ rose, things changed. They had, suddenly the spirit came came into them. Suddenly they had, you know, they had the mind of Christ. They were growing in the ways of Christ. They learned so much when Jesus was there. And it all came back after they, after the spirit came. And in the same kind of way that we have, we have the Holy Spirit with us. We have God with us all the time. And so in the same way, we're growing and learning and, and that we learn from, from reading the word. We learn from being with each other. We also learn from the difficulties in our life and the troubles. And God uses different things to, to help grow us and put us in the right place. So God knows what he's doing, even if we don't know what he's doing. So we'll go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that we can be encouraged that we know that you, you know where we should go, that you know what we should do, that we can look to you for all the, all the things of our lives, that we can look to you for our direction. And we know that we don't have to be afraid, that we don't have to be fearful about the direction of everything. We know that you, will, you are leading things in the way that they should go. We know that if the world won't go with you, then the world is against you. But that, that really doesn't matter. They're not going to thwart your ways. And so you know the best place to put us. So just lead us, Lord. Give us, give us the boldness to do what you would have us to do, to help us to do your, to do your will. Give us, the, give us the grace to carry it out, Lord. Thank you. Amen.